Okay, an update on my e-bike road bike. I remember earlier at one point I had a video up saying that it went around 60 plus miles an hour. That was really not the case. What happened was when you run bigger tires on here, you end up having a speedometer that's way off. Um, the top speed on this bike is actually 51 miles an hour. So, bigger tires don't matter. It's the power of the motor and stuff. But, nearing 51 miles an hour kind of gets a little bit scary. Um, I'm sure it's terrifying on a regular bike. But, um, to ease my peace and everything, I decided to upgrade my brakes to hydraulic. I just gotta hook up the um, region brake system. I'm really not having any brain, I mean not battery drain issues or anything. I just took it not too long ago. I wanted to visit the paintball range and I had to go to the store to um, get some e-liquid. And that's all the way out there. Ran pretty good. I mostly, the, these things, I hate riding these on the sidewalk. Yes, it's cushioned and everything, but there's just so much more slower to get to your destination on the sidewalk. Plus there was a road that had a bunch of turns. I wish I had a GoPro because that was fun. But, the screen has been fixed on it. What's happened is if you got 27 or 26 inch rims you're putting on here, then that can, you're gonna have to go into the computer and you're gonna have to, if it's 27.5 inch rims, you're gonna have to put the rim size on that computer here to 18 rim size. That's the only way you're gonna get it to read accurately. Um, like I said, I thought I went faster, but then I started noticing, hmm, can't, I can't be going that fast because I would have felt it. Um, plus, I decided to use my GPS on my phone. And to my fright, I wasn't going as fast as I thought I was. But basically, tap on this twice. average and then there you go you got the menu and you have to go to the tire size menu hit on M and there's where it is 18 inches actually the tire size I had to program it at that's only how I was gonna able to get the sp speedometer to actually work the way it should um, so far, the bike runs really good. I'm happy with it. Tell you the truth. Um, and then there's another thing on here that I don't understand is the factory reset. You try to go into it, you need a passcode. Um, those didn't come on the directions, and I think that has something to do with the alarm system working on these. Like I said, I haven't yet found a video that someone actually got the alarm system on the M-Powered kit. That's what the kit's called. Uh, well, actually, MB-Powered kit. That's what it's called. And I haven't found anyone that was able to get the passkey alarm to work on it. It's very important to get that to work because it's actually, it's not just a alarm that, you know, makes noise. It'll actually lock your back wheel up. It'll magnetize it and lock it up. So basically, if someone's trying to pedal off or ride off with it, well, they gotta actually go, they gotta probably hot wire it, which is not hard. They still would have to get the panels off and still pedal it off um, after they cut the U-lock off. 
Um, once that, then they can just pedal it off. But if you got the alarm system working and it's making noise and the back tire's locked up, um, unless they got a truck that they're planning on putting it in and they're gonna need more than one person, unless they're real strong, they could pick up, you know, something that's over 100 pounds by themselves and throw it into a truck, then they're not gonna get far. Um, future upgrades I'm probably going to do on it is right now I'm happy with it um, so it probably won't be getting any future upgrades just basically new brake pads and stuff um, and I'm planning on building another one though using a different frame style and smaller tires um, kit will be a little bit more powerful um, 150 amp sabaton I have sitting around that I'll end up using. Um, I should probably build the battery myself. Um, I used to be into RC cars. I know how to solder, I know how to weld. I got a little spot welder that I received that actually is for the batteries where you it actually spot welds the nickel strip or the copper strip onto a battery without doing damage to the cells. You need a voltmeter. Uh, you need the cells, of course. You're going to need very thick gauge wire. Um, this bike is using, I believe, six gauge. Pretty fat wiring. Um, it's using a T90 connector, which means it can handle, you know, 90 volts. But even that actually shorted out at one point. When I first got the bike, it shorted out because I didn't plug it all the way in. And it ended up, basically, I had to get a new connector for the speed controller side. And I had to clean the terminal really good. I had one of the... I know, I, I know, I got it. I got... I got to find a way to get it off. Doing a video. Oh, okay. Okay, after that interruption. Hello, baby. Oh, now you go outside. All you do is sit and bark at the door. But back to the subject, yeah. Fun ride. Has only five speeds work because for some reason, Durrell are on it. I think the chain is just too um, small. I might have to add some links to it to get, the, get it to shift into all seven gears. I'm not really too concerned. I seldomly ever pedal it because you can only use the first mode on it if you want to do pedal assist to get any type of exercise or pedal assist. Um, these are heavy bikes, so they do get, they are a good exercise. But, yep. Next build I'm gonna do is kinda use a different particular frame. I might actually take my welding skills and actually build a very light frame. and see how it is. I kind of wanted to design my own frame personally. But I'm still drawing up the design stuff. Uh, if anything, I just order another frame. Uh, I, there's a couple of frames on there that has my attention and I like. But that's why I took the video down as far as the speed test because it was absolutely not accurate. I mean, this is an 80 amp speed controller, 3000 watt motor with a um, 72 volt, 21 amp hour battery with um, 80 amp BMS. So you got people on here with these stealth bombers that's going over 60 something miles an hour. They got a they got a way more powerful motor, which really the motor don't really mean, mean speed or anything, but they, 
I'll just say that they got a way more powerful speed controller and battery. And they're doing over 60. So the 80 amp bike with the 80 amp BMS 72 volt bike will probably yield you depending on the weight. I weigh about 142, so it'll probably yield you up to about 50 something miles an hour. Um, I top out at 51. Um, if you're heavier than me, then you'll probably be doing like 40. I think every 100 pounds, I think takes away five miles an hour. Cause you got the voltage load and everything. Um, but yeah, you know, without any load, it actually goes fast, but that's with no one on it. But I'm gonna conclude the video here. Like I said, I was just showing off my new hydraulic brakes. If you got one of these and your bike is, you know, even if you have one of these and your bike's not doing, you know, past, if you're doing like 35 or 40 miles an hour, I still recommend hydraulic brakes for these bikes. It's just they're too heavy and with the normal set of, I had the cable pull hydraulic ones on there once and the, um, I had some stock rotors on there, which it, those rotors warped and they just heat it up. They don't cool really fast or anything. These, they cool down pretty quick. They got like a heat displacement that actually goes and displaces the heat so they cool down. But they stop extremely well. I don't have to worry about, you know, going fast and, you know, worrying about if I can stop or not. Um, you're gonna have to, brake pads on here so far i've gotten about 20 something miles on these brake pads um they're actually barely starting to show that they need to be changed so you get them get brake hydraulic brakes get extra brake pads too these are four piston brakes I think they should be a must on any of these um, heavier bikes. Uh, like I said, I've seen normal, I had pull cable hydraulic brakes and I think those are good for an electric bike that's a normal mountain bike that's not as heavy. But for one of these, they kind of wore down pretty fast. I mean, they were pretty much in terrible shape when I pulled them. The rotors were the worst. Those things look like they're gonna just chip apart. And there you go. Um, actually, another future upgrade I'll probably do is get one of the Ankler speakers and probably build it maybe a dash or build it into the side of this frame here for Bluetooth music for my phone. Um, of course, you're not going to hear the music going full speed, even though it's electric and it's quiet. You got the wind and everything gushing and past your ears, so you're not going to really hear too much. But that's just my follow-up video, um, just a video correction of my last video saying that, you know, hey, I had a video of it going 60-something, but the speedometer was way off. Um, so just keep that in mind. Got 27.5 inch rims or 26 inch rims or even 24 inch rims. Look, pay attention to this, put a phone GPS on it and test the real speed and then set it accordingly. And that's how you're gonna set it. It's basically, you're gonna have to downsize the wheel size for it. It kind of tricks the computer into thinking that there's actually 18 inch rims on it, even though they're more bigger. Um, it's weird, I don't know why they program them like that, but that's what they do. But all right, guys, thanks. And anyone that views my videos, I usually, I'm into e-bikes, so any e-bike video that I see, personally, I subscribe to, but I'm not asking for subscriptions or anything. 
Um, I just want to keep in touch with everyone that's into e-bikes online. You have a hobby, you kind of want to keep in touch with other people with a hobby or with the same hobby. So there you go. And thank you for watching.